cold air, no sound except the crunch of steel on the ground. A shape glides between trees, low, deliberate, alive. This is the Swedish CV-90, not the loudest, not the newest, but the one that works when everything else crashes. When drones jam comms and artillery hunts heat, the CV-90 still boots up. It's the silent rhythm of a platoon that refuses to die, a machine built for war's new language, data, tempo, and seconds. But this story didn't start in a war zone. It started with an impossible question in the North. 1990s Sweden wanted a vehicle that could keep up with tanks, fight through forests, and still deliver a squad ready to move. No compromises, mobility first, survivability second, future-proofing third. The engineers at Haglunds answered with a chassis built like a promise. Wide tracks for the snow, a suspension meant for uneven misery, and space, literal space, for armor that hadn't been invented yet. They designed a platform with patience. Every boat whispered, we'll upgrade later. And they did. Because the real secret was never the steel, it was the mindset. The CV-90 was never just one vehicle. It was a family that grew with war itself. You can't talk about the CV-90 like it's a single model. It's an ecosystem. From the original Strif 9040 with its stabilized 40 mm Bofors gun to exports carrying 30 or 35 mm Bushmasters, each variant is a different tool in the same toolbox. The Swedes went with programmable 3P ammunition, airburst, delay, point detonate, rounds that decide when to explode. Infantry behind walls learned that cover was a suggestion, not protection. Meanwhile, command versions swapped troop space for radios and screens. Recon versions turned the turret into a drone hunter. One chassis, dozens of roles, same logistics, same DNA. That's how you build momentum that scales. But firepower is only half the truth. The CV-90 was engineered to stay alive in places that kill everything else. Survival was never one armor plate thick. It's layer after layer of choices. Low profile to avoid spotting. Angled armor to deflect modular composites to adapt. Underneath, belly plates and shock-absorbing seats soak up mine blasts. Old RPGs? They get caught in slat armor like flies in a web. Thermal seekers? Multispectral smoke shuts their eyes. Laser locks? Receivers trigger automatic smoke before the enemy even breathes on the trigger. The CV-90 doesn't promise invincibility. It promises seconds to react. And on today's battlefield, seconds are luxury goods. Because if you can't stop everything, you can still outlive it. But seconds mean nothing without speed. And that's where the CV-90 turns into something else entirely. A hunter on tracks. The gun matters, but the brain changes the fight. Inside the CV-90, commander and gunner don't stare through the same window. They own independent thermal sights that lock on targets while the vehicle eats bumps. Auto track keeps a lock steady when the ground tries to throw the shot away. A laser rangefinder reads distance in a blink. Meteorological sensors feed the fire control a tiny weather report so the ballistic computer can solve a firing solution before the enemy has time to blink. This is not magic, it's math and bandwidth. A crew sees a threat, the software highlights it, suggests a solution, and shrinks the timeline between seeing and striking. The commander can tap a target and push it across the platoon network like a hot potato. Gunner, platoon leader, mortar team, everyone sees the same picture in the same second. Think of it as reflex augmentation. Humans still choose. The vehicle just shortens indecision into action. 
and when the gun hands off a problem to another vehicle, the battlefield's tempo bends to your will. Speed of thought needs a vehicle that can go where thought chooses, and that's mobility with teeth. Mobility isn't a sprint, it's a day-long grind that kills vehicles far from showy battles. Newer CV90 marks carry near 1,000 horsepower. Tracks are wide, power to weight numbers refuse to lie. Active dampers let the gun stay on target at speed. Rubber tracks shave noise and vibration so crews don't get hollowed out by fatigue. That means more hours in the fight, not just a few dramatic charges. But mobility ties into hiding. Signature management is now survival doctrine. Heat and sound are treated like vulnerabilities. Suppression, shaping, confusion. Silent watch modes cut thermal and acoustic output. Hybrid power options let a vehicle sit quiet and listen instead of scream on the wire. EW power budget means loadouts can include jammers and dazzlers, not tomorrow's dreams, but today's attachments. A cheap FPV drone can find you by smell and sound unless you make that job harder. The CV90 makes it expensive to find you. That delay gives you choices. Mask, move, punish. The enemy spends time adapting. You spend seconds acting. War is unkind to fiction. Ukraine is a brutal laboratory that separates clever marketing from workhorse truth. Drones circle like flies. Artillery probes anything that breathes heat. FPVs thread windows for scouting and killing. In that environment, vehicles that can't hide, move, network, and hit with speed are living on borrowed time. CV-90 operators found patterns fast. Smoke early, not late. Use airburst to clear hedgerows and urban holes. Make short, violent sprints and leave before the enemy finishes counting. The CV-90's upgrades mattered because they were practical. Programmable 3P rounds turn hedges and trenches into temporary traps for the enemy. Multispectral smoke and jammers make drones work for their food. Vehicles that could return from missions often enough were the ones that made campaigns sustainable. Afghanistan taught different lessons. Mines chewed at vehicles and heat punished drivetrains. The CV-90 the adapted there too. C, Belly the protection kits, shock mitigating giants, seats, Bofosh, drive train tweaks for altitude and dust. Tier Those lessons traveled Bofosh forward, was tightened for developing into the, the platform's DNA, final making assembly. the CV-90 less brittle and more enduring. In you don't buy a CV-90 for a parade. You buy it to keep the platoon coherent through the worst hours. Field reports show it does that job. Not perfectly, nothing is, but often enough to matter. Performance means nothing if you can't fix it, and here, logistics become victory by other means. A brilliant vehicle that only one army can maintain is a museum piece. The CV-90 escaped that fate by design and by market. Shared chassis means shared spares. Depot manuals stop being private dialects and become a language allied mechanics can read. When one operator solves a glitch between a new jammer and the turret drive, the fix can propagate. That is force multiplication without explosions. It's maintenance doctrine. Production scale matters too. Several European partners, defense firms, and upgrade contracts created a production ecosystem that can ramp. You can field more, fix more, and learn faster. That's how a platform stays relevant not by a single exotic technology, but by accepting improvements without collapsing under complexity. Technical elasticity is the CV-90's real superpower. Software updates improve sighting and targeting. New multispectral suites slide into the same racks. Active protection systems bolt on for those who can afford them. The vehicle doesn't become obsolete, it becomes older and smarter. This rolls into how the CV-90 changes the platoon's heartbeat, and that's where theory becomes tactics. At platoon level, the clock is merciless. Whoever sees cleanly, decides cleanly, and acts cleanly controls tempo. 
The CV90 shortens each of those verbs. Ramp drops happen precisely. The intercom is clear, not a tin can. Squad leaders touch a map and get a live picture before boots hit the dirt. The turret answers marks in seconds. When smoke blooms, it's not panic, it's choreography. Suppress, dismount, clear, and vanish. The dismounts become sensor shooter teams the moment their boots touch soil because the vehicle handed them a live target picture while still rolling. This is not glamour, it's repetition. Hide, hit, move, reset. Done fast enough that the enemy's kill chain never closes. You can repeat it through a long day without burning the force out. That's tempo warfare. Violent in bursts, sustainable in rhythm. When a CV-90 meets a main battle tank, doctrine governs the dance. You spot, you blind, you harass, you force the heavy to fight imperfectly. Then you invite the decisive tool to finish what the CV-90 began. It's not about pretending to be something you're not. It's about forcing the fight into the squares you choose. So what's the bill for this kind of performance? The answer isn't cheap, but it isn't stupendously wasteful either. Quality costs money. Programmable rounds, advanced optics, and robust logistics don't fall from trees. But a common platform with long production runs amortizes that expense. Parts pools, shared training, and upgrade paths mean the dollar buys tempo, not a one-hit wonder. This is buying years of relevance, not a flashy headline that fades. You're paying for a vehicle that can grow with the war, and that growth returns value when lives and missions depend on it. We've covered metal, math, and maintenance. Now picture the moment that makes the choice obvious. Imagine a dawn column. The route is mined, watched, and wired. Drones climb the haze. You have a choice at the front, a vehicle that screams for attention with headline numbers, or a machine that quietly hands you seconds and preserves options. The CV-90 doesn't promise immortality. It promises time. Time to see, time to decide, time to act. Time to choose your ground, not be chosen by it. It's the system that keeps the platoon coherent under stress, the node that turns dismounts into sensor shooter teams, the chassis that receives upgrades like a radio receives a clearer station. In a battlefield where milliseconds are capital, the CV-90 is conservative wealth, survival bought in small increments repeated until campaigns add up. It's not flashy, it's functional. It is a quiet machine that keeps people alive and missions possible. So when the first drone swarm lifts and the first artillery bracket adjusts, what do you want leading your column? A headline hog that looks good in briefings or the patient machine that keeps everyone else alive and on time? The Swedish CV-90 doesn't sell immortality. It sells options. In today's fight, options are everything. Time is the currency of life on the battlefield. Buy it wisely.